Hey everyone, welcome back to the vlog. Um, today I'm working on an orchestral piece in Sibelius. Um, I've used notation since I started writing music, um, sort of 20 years ago. It's a huge part of, of my process. This particular um, piece at the moment has 65 roughly pages of uh, sketch. So this is very much the sketching rough, raw, um, stage, um, but I'm very happy to kind of share it because, as I said, you listening to it kind of helps helps me um, kind of hear and see more things about it. Um, so this is a note performer playing back. This is only a couple of minutes, but let's fire in and have a listen and see what's going on. about as far as you're allowed to hear just now. As, I, as I've really liked to show in this vlog and will continue to show in this vlog is the rough sketching. This is definitely not the final product by any stretch of the imagination. So uh, the piece begins with these kind of dark chords in the brass. Um, we've got uh, the contrabass kind of adding a little bit of quaver, um, quaver energy to it. And then it kind of erupts at this moment here where the strings start playing all these scales. And we have the introduction of the theme so it's just played by the trumpets and the horns. I hope you heard this, okay. So this theme keeps coming back. I try and be super, super, super clear with myself um, about what is important in a piece of music. And this theme is the important thing. So this keeps coming back, these six notes. Um, this is like an elongated version of it in the horns here. And then um, it comes back uh, very clearly uh, in the strings here as well. And um, they, they play, it, play it when it comes back here. So that's essentially the same thing. In the middle, the horns are playing kind of the same melody, just a kind of uh, an extension of it, I guess you would call um, call here. It's the same kind of shape. So at this moment here, I'm just going to break down what is actually kind of going on. So let's uh, start at the top and work our way down. So the woodwinds um, here are just have these kind of uh, flourishes. And then the clarinets are playing um, the same line as the violins are in the bottom part. And then bassoon is covering what the horn is playing as well. I still need to fill out the contra bassoon a little bit here, but this is what the woodwinds sound like here. So they're basically there for colour. Now the brass, um, we have from the bottom up the tuba and the bass. Um, trombone are adding rhythmic punch and emphasis. 
the trombones are playing elongated chords and the trumpets are adding energy and then the horns as I said are playing the melody. So here's what the brass are doing at this moment. <laughs> So that's the brass, and then working further down, um, the strings. I should say that I don't really write much percussion um, at this stage. I really just kind of save that for when I take the DAW and then bring it back. Oops, that's a bad copy and pasting on the go. Um, so the strings here, the cello is playing the melody, and we've got um, this scurrying line in the violin two and viola. They're the real engine room of this. The double bass is adding some emphasis. You know what, I'm actually just going to take that all down the octave because I think that'll just sound a bit grittier and my bad copying and pasting is coming to the fore. Um, and then we've got violin one is just adding some, just some rhythmic energy to this as well. So this is what the string sounds like. So you might have noticed that the time signature here is 9-8, but divided as 1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-3. So not a conventional way of using 9-8, normally you use 9-8 as 3-3-3. Three, three, three. But here I want to use this, um, it's difficult to tell exactly what the beat is, and that's kind of an important thing. Um, that's that's exactly what I was kind of looking for. So it's kind of energised and kind of, um, but rhythmically um, ambiguous. That's really what I'm kind of going for here. So then here, this kind of second part of the energised moment, you'll see that the horn melody actually becomes more compressed and this acts to add more tension. When you bring quicker notes into something, generally things become more um, energised and intense and, um, you know, builds up a sense, of, a sense of tension. So this is what happens here with the horns. And then we have um, these really beefy notes in the bass clarinet, contra bass clarinet, contra bassoon um, and the timpani and the bass trombone and tuba. So they're just adding a bit of fruitiness uh, at the bass. Um, that's all they're doing here. So that's essentially how I'm kind of working this here. I'm building up tension in the second half because it changes harmonically as well. It moves into kind of a D minor, which is a, a minor third away from the B minor key that we're originally in. The melody becomes more uh, compressed and shorter and we add some more bass. That's basically what I'm doing to add, um, add a greater sense of tension here, which then releases up at this, this moment here. So this is a really, really brief look at where I'm at just now. In a future vlog, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my process of moving this MIDI into my orchestral template in the DAW and then how I kind of muck around with that and play with that and uh, and deal with that. I know lots of composers go straight to the DAW um, and they get good results but sometimes I find that my orchestration can be a little bit more interesting and it's way easier to put these runs, these really um, fast notes into um, Sibelius first and then into the DAW. Um, it definitely makes that part of the work, uh, the workflow quicker but it just depends what you're used to, I suppose. I come from a background of, of always notating all my music um, and I know lots of composers don't and it's there's no right way or wrong way. I'm certainly not preaching that this is the way to do it. But let me know in the comments if you've ever um, approached writing a piece of music this way and then maybe moved it to DW. Thank you so much for uh, coming back to the vlog and I'll see you next time.